New lava eruptions in Hawaii have people doing dangerous things. Body cam footage has been released of a ranger who tased a man who went off trail and our 63rd National Park. It's time for the latest in National Park news. I'm Jason Epperson and this is RV Miles and here we talk about the latest in RV and camping news. Today, our monthly National Park News Roundup, which you can also find on our weekly America's National Parks podcast, available on any podcast app. West Virginia's New River Gorge National River has been renamed as New River Gorge National Park and Preserve, making it the 63rd national park in the country and the 20th preserve. The new federal COVID stimulus relief package that ended up folding in several other end-of-year business items includes the name change for the gorge. President Trump signed it into law on December 27th. The proposal was originally brought forth in 2019, and it's very transparently aimed at increasing tourism. Outdoor recreation is a $9 billion industry in West Virginia, and Senator Shelley Capito expects the status change to increase the visitation in the park by 21%. Still, the change is only in the name. Funding for national parks is no different than the other National Park Service units. Since the gorge was already facilitated by the National Park Service, the primary alterations will be to signage, brochures, and the website. New River is a rugged whitewater river flowing northward through deep canyons, and it's among the oldest rivers on the continent. The park encompasses nearly 73,000 acres, of which 6,000 will be the national park, and the rest will be designated as a national preserve. The difference being that hunting is not allowed in national parks, but is permitted in national preserves. There's a net reduction in hunting land of about 4,300 acres. Additionally, Saguaro National Park will grow by 1,152 acres as part of legislation agreed to earlier in December that was also folded into the bill. The Department of the Interior also announced the establishment of the Medgar and Murley Evers Home National Monument in Jackson, Mississippi. Medgar Evers was the first nationally recognized leader of the civil rights movement to be murdered. You can hear the Evers whole story in a recent episode of our podcast that I'll link to in the description. The return of lava to the Kilauea Volcano in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park has resulted in a sharp increase in visitation and a rise in potentially deadly closure violations at the Summit Lava Lake after dark. The eruption is contained within a closed area where a rising lava lake is being fed by two vents gushing molten rock. Dangerous levels of volcanic gas, rock falls, explosions, and volcanic glass particulates are the primary hazards, according to USGS scientists. The area has been closed since 2007. Crater edges along the calderas are extremely unstable and collapses can occur at any time. Despite these potentially lethal hazards, park rangers have cited dozens of careless individuals intent on snapping a photo or video for social media bragging rights. The Zion Canyon is the most famous part of Zion National Park, and it's been shut down to automobiles in spring through fall for several years. Instead, visitors must utilize the park shuttle system. In the winter, the road normally reopens, but this year visitation has been so heavy that the park has had to close off access to the Canyon Drive on many occasions and has now reinstituted the shuttle for the off season. This summer already had Zion officials instituting a reservation system for the shuttle for the very first time and advanced tickets will still be required for this winter. As wildfires came dangerously close to Sequoia and Kings Canyon in September, the park set into motion a plan to keep their archives safe. Working with expert librarians from the University of California, the records were evacuated. Ward Eldridge, the curator of the archives, was trying hard to find a way to move the materials. He couldn't find a van or a truck because the residents in the area had booked them all for their own evacuations. Arrangements were made for one day with the university's moving truck, and everything was packed out and delivered to the UC Merced campus, which is two and a half hours away from the park's visitor centers. The archives include hundreds of boxes of collections and cabinets of plant specimens and artifacts. It's a complete record of the administrative history of the park. And Sequoia was the second oldest national park in the United States, established in 1890. So there are records related to its founding and throughout the 20th century. Tens of thousands of photographs cover pretty much every place within the park. There are maps of the Sequoia Groves and maps related to how trails and roads and other buildings were constructed. 
In addition to better protection, the records will now be available with better access for UC students and the general public. The university will also begin to digitize all of the content. Most fire-related restrictions in the sister parks ended on December 23rd, but several closures are still in place while damage is assessed and repaired. President-elect Joe Biden is tapping Representative Deb Holland to lead the Department of the Interior. If confirmed by the Senate, Holland, a member of the Laguna Pueblo in New Mexico, would be the country's first Native American cabinet secretary. The Interior Department consists of 70,000 employees who manage our country's public land, including the National Park Service. The department is also tasked with upholding the federal government's responsibilities to the country's 574 federally recognized Indian tribes and Alaskan native villages. Speaking of those rights, the National Park Service has released the body cam video from a law enforcement ranger who tased a Native American man who refused to identify himself. Daryl House and his sister were observed going off trail by the ranger who began an interaction by simply explaining the rules. Hey. Park Ranger, I just need to talk to you about the off-trail stuff, okay? Um, you guys gotta stay on the trail, all right? And then also, sorry, I'm out of breath. I was trying to haul to keep up with you guys. Oh, um, when you're up along the rocks and all that, that's super sacred to the tribes. They don't want anybody up there. And then we get a lot of graffiti as well. House identified himself as an indigenous American and former Marine, but refused to offer his name until eventually he gave a fake name. So all I need, make sure that we haven't talked about it in the past. You don't need my identification, sir. So let's don't go down that road, okay? All right, sir, I really just want to restart this. This is not a big deal. Like I said, this is a simple warning. Mm -hmm. Do you know his name? Yeah. Okay, what is his name? Gerald. Thank you. Is that with a G, sir? It's a J. Okay. He attempted to walk away from the officer several times, and after about seven minutes... The officer tased him repeatedly in order to detain him in handcuffs. Dude, stop right now, sir. Stop walking. Stop walking or you may be tased. Stop walking. Please. Put the, put the dog down right now. Please, sir. Just put the dog down right now. Put, put the dog down right now. Sir. I'm scared. Why is this going so off? I, I don't understand. Can you can, can, can you ask can you ask we him just, to put the we dog down, please? There. Why are you doing this? Can you please Help! ask him to put the dog down, Help! Help! sir? Help! House was unarmed and does not believe his actions warranted identifying himself to the officer. He believes that Native Americans should have the ability to go off trail on ancestral lands without consent. National Park Service directives do require that policies don't interfere with Indian tribal use of traditional areas and sacred resources, stating, quote, the service will be as unrestrictive as possible in permitting Native American tribes access to park areas to perform traditional religious, ceremonial, or other customary activities at places that have been used historically for such purposes. House was given three citations by the ranger for interfering with agency function, false information, and being off trail. The incident is being pointed to by many as an example of abuse of power by law enforcement and the National Park Service is investigating. I'll put a link to the full video in the description so you can decide for yourself. That's it for this month's news from the parks. If you got something out of this video, the only thing we ask is that you click that like button. And if you want more like this, click the subscribe button as well. You can find us on any podcast app as the RV Miles podcast and the America's National Parks podcast and the Sea America podcast. Let us know in the comments what you think about any of the stories in this video, and we'll see you on the next one.